Burikwaku, the mountain in the sea. This is the name the Khoi Khoi gave Table Mountain on the Cape Peninsula, the home long before European immigrants colonized the Cape. It is also the name of a five-day hiking trail between Cape Point and the City Bowl. Twelve hikers followed in Khoi Khoi footsteps in January this year. We start at Cape Point on a very windy day. It's the middle of January and you wouldn't expect it to be this cold. With the Cape Point lighthouse behind us, we tackle the first slope. After an hour, it starts to rain rather heavily. Thankfully, the Biffelsfontein Visitor Center comes into view before we get completely soaked. While waiting here for the rain to subside, we dip into our snack rations and have some hot tea and coffee. From here, the trail starts out relatively flat, but then it gets steep again. After a while, we look back to see how far we've come. In front of us, sheer cliffs drop into the sea. The view is breathtaking. Further along, Smitswinkel Bay comes into view. The last stretch follows the tar road outside the reserve's gate to the tenters' camp. The accommodation is very comfortable. There are boardwalks from the kitchen to each double tent with an ensuite bathroom. It's time to make a campfire and dinner. Each evening a different team of three is responsible for cooking, while the others can rest and relax. We go to bed early, because we have an early start planned. We get a lift by car from Spitzwinkel Bay to the day starting point Red Hill, above Simon's Town. The terrain is relatively flat. It's an easy walk through the Feinbos, with a back table of Table Mountain in the hazy distance, to claim Plaus Dam. We enjoy a break next to the dam. The only sign of aquatic life is a sluggish plat under the shallow water. Once everyone is caught up, we continue hiking. With Ocean View and Sun Valley below us and the sea on the horizon, there's only slump up to crest before we descend to Komiki, where the next tented camp awaits. The sun is beating down, and at the top of the hill we're glad to find shade at the ruin of a World War II radar station. When Slankop Lighthouse comes into sight, it's not far to camp. As the sun sets and the beam of the lighthouse starts to sweep across the sea, dinner is prepared in the kitchen. We're a little apprehensive about tomorrow's hike. It's the longest and toughest stage of the trail. Where Strandloop is this morning? We have to cross Long Beach and Nordic Beach to get to the foot of Chapman's Peak. It's a windy day and the sea is restless. We're aiming for the top of Chapman's Peak, towering 593 meters above sea level. The wind is howling and we have to concentrate not to lose our footing on the steep sections. Those of us who were under the impression that once we've conquered Chappies, the hardest part would be behind us, are in for a surprise. The path descends down Chapman's Neck to 220 meters above sea level only to rise soon after to almost 700 meters. That's higher than Chapman's Peak. Somewhere along the way we wander off the path and we need to consult the map. The view from the top is pretty amazing. Slankop Lighthouse looks microscopic in the distance. The blue water of Solmine Dam is a welcome sight. It's not far now. We have briberikis for a starter, and they polished up very quickly. It's good to know we've survived the toughest day. <laughs> it's just after 6am and already 20 degrees Celsius. It's going to be hot today. The path is steep and the sun beats down hot on our necks. Fishing vessels are setting out for the day from Hope Bay Harbour. Once more, we're not sure about the direction to take, left or right, up or down, until someone spots the right path. We zigzag down and around Constantia Berg in the shade. 
On the other side, the sun waits for us. We plod along on the heat for what seems like hours. Then, suddenly, we're back in civilization. From Constantinec, we hike into Orange Cliff into the forest, where our next camp awaits. Everyone is knackered. The temperature soared above 40 degrees Celsius today. A shower and an afternoon nap are followed by a hearty meal and lots of laughter around the campfire. It's still early morning, but it's already humid in Orange Cliff. We have and puff on the uphills along the back of the Twelve Apostles into Disa Gorge. It's a lush clue full of ferns, indigenous trees and flowers, although we didn't see any geysers. At the top of the gorge is Woodhead Dam's 50 meter high wall. It feels odd to encounter such a huge man-made wall in the pristine kloof. It feels like watching a scene from the television series Lost. We still have a few steep up and downs ahead, including a couple of steel ladders. And then, we're on top of the eastern table. The trail goes down Platyclip Gorge and officially enters the Platyclip wash houses on the low slopes of the mountain, but we all opt for an ice cold drink at the restaurant and a ride down the cable car. It took us five days to hike 70 kilometers along the mountainous spine of the Cape Peninsula. From its southern tip, to the top of the table. The Hurikwaku is a tough hike, but absolutely worth the effort. <laughs>